Hey, meet Hubert. He's the star of today's video. His goal in life is to farm sweet, sweet loots for you. Because he loves you. Through blood, sweat, and an abusive waste of mana, he's pummeled his way to an all new level. And he's about to get his grubby little fingers on that tasty artifact upgrade you've been working on all week. The enemies are numerous, but weak. And Hubert has saved just enough mana for one last large flame blast. If he can aim this perfectly, nay, just roughly near them, he'll wreak devastation upon them, and then that long-awaited treasure is yours for the taking. Ouch, that didn't go as planned. But fear not, because in this video, we'll be figuring out a better way to do our AI system for targeting our area of effect spells. That way Hubert, and you, can farm those sweet, sweet loots more efficiently. First up, we're gonna need a testing environment. Enhance. And our Hubert, for aesthetic purposes. All right, we're making progress, but now we need to figure out how to have Hubert automatically pick the most or at least a large area of enemies in a short amount of time. To do this, we're going to add an area that shows how many enemies are struck with each spell, as well as the time it took for Hubert to make up his mind. This will help us optimize our algorithm for maximum efficiency. But we're not done yet. We'll also need a way to choose between the different algorithms we'll be testing. To do this, we'll add a tab for each new algorithm we will be trying that lets us switch between different methods for casting our spells. And to really put our algorithm into the test, we'll need to have a randomizer that creates a random amount of enemies scattered around the map. This will help us see if the amount of enemies makes it harder for the algorithm to work efficiently. And now that we have everything set up, it's time to start testing our different algorithms. Now our first two algorithms are what I like to call base algorithms. They will each hit one of the two data points as proficiently as possible at the cost of the other data point. The first algorithm is going to be focused all on speed. It's designed to help me cast as quickly as possible, even if it means hitting fewer enemies. While the second algorithm is all about hitting as many enemies as possible, even if it means sacrificing all of its speed. These two algorithms are important since they will be providing a baseline for the next set of algorithms that I'm about to show you. And by comparing these performances to the new algorithms, we can attempt to stay as close to the perfect scores while improving the values on the sacrifice side. Alrighty, taking a look at algorithm number one. This one will be spending zero time picking enemies and will give us the lowest possible lag rate. And we'll throw a few random casts here and log the times to compare later. And hopping over to our second algorithm, we'll go ahead and test that. And you can see all of the enemies freeze on our click. And that is our algorithm actually freezing the game while it figures out the best location. And then after roughly four seconds, it finds a spot and hits five enemies. And then if we press this again, it is going to find the same exact spot. The time varies slightly, but since this finds the best location, it will continue to find that same spot every time. And then if we change up the map and have a larger amount of enemies, it's going to take notably longer since on each pixel it checks, which is all of them, it also checks the distance to every enemy which makes this notably slower the more enemies we have. And as you can see here, it took almost 13 seconds. And knowing what I know now, my goal is to build some algorithms. And as far as effectiveness goes, I definitely want it to be at least half as good, half as effective as our slow version, but closer to probably 70-80%. And then as far as speed goes, I think anything under 100 milliseconds will be mostly unnoticeable, so that'll be our goal there. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce algorithm 3, the evolution of our trusty base algorithm 2. With our cast range being 600 by 600 pixels, our base algorithm has to check a whopping 360,000 points, which of course is why it's so dreadfully slow. Proposal? By using the distance of our cast range as a guide, we can check a subset of the positions and keep a steady efficiency. So here's the plan. We'll check the first pixel and then every spell cast range divided by 20 pixels from there forth. This reduces the number of checks to a mere 31 by 31 or only 961 position. 
Yes, we are straight up sacrificing effectiveness for efficiency here, but as long as the rate at which our effectiveness drops is slower than the rate which we're reducing the number of checks, then we're golden. And here we can see it in action. We'll grab a random size with more enemies and run it a few times. And the elapsed time is way quicker than I thought it'd be. And without another algorithm to reference, we can't be sure how good it did with the total hits, but it does seem to be hitting large groups, so it is looking very promising. For our next algorithm, we'll be looking at every imp, except the ones outside of our range. Though it is important to note, they do still exist and will count as an enemy hit if they are collateral damage from one of the imps being targeted inside of our range. Then we'll simply check to see how many we would hit at each different position, and the one with the most hit is our chosen cast position. Simple, and this algorithm will only be slowed down as we add a lot more enemies. And going ahead and taking a quick peek again. Our first cast with 43 milliseconds, then 12 milliseconds, and under 10. So this one is definitely quick enough, and the numbers seem good as well, so this should be another good contender. And the final algorithm. Here I figured our last algorithm was doing so well on speed that we could take that and trade some of the speed for more accuracy. The concept is that of the previous algorithm, where we find a large group of bunched enemies, but we are not necessarily hitting the most enemies yet, so we're going to take that targeted center position and we're going to apply the concept from our first contending algorithm, and we're going to check every few places around a smaller spellcast area, and we'll be using 60 by 60 for this. And the hope here is that we can pick up a few extra enemies without adding too much to the cast time. And for our test for this one, all we're really worried about is that we didn't affect the time too much. And we start out with a 53 and a 25 and a 17. So we can still get pretty low, but it does seem a bit slower, which is what we expected. And hopefully that total hit number goes up enough to make it worth it. So... Now that we have them all ready, let's go ahead and test them out against each other. We'll go ahead and make a scoring base, that way we can compare them all. And we'll be doing this based off of the elapsed time. If any goes above 100, they'll be disqualified. And for every 5 points below 100, that'll be 1 point. And for every 1 total hit more than whoever got the lowest one, that'll be 5 bonus points. And is this point system scientifically fair? Probably not. It just sounded good in my brain. And it gives us a surefire winner. So, without further ado, I'll go ahead and hop in here. But if you want to guess beforehand and throw your prediction of what one will be the overall best down in the comments below, we'll see if you're right. And we'll load this up and we'll go ahead and run three different tests. In the first one, I want a small amount of enemies. And then the second one, a average amount, and then a large amount. And I'm going to jump off this first page just because it is not random. And we'll find one that does not have a lot of enemies. This sounds good. And we'll go through each one. Random, being fast, and nothing else. And instantly fails to meet the time standard, so it will be eliminated from henceforth. But it hit four, so that's a good uh, mark indicator for the rest of them. Oh, and 13, and also hits four. And number four comes in way faster, but only hits three. And then the final one, again, we only hit three. All right, finding a middle, yeah, middle of the row. And we'll go random, one and one, and we're skipping this one again. And algorithm three, hitting seven at 19. And then picking the center, hitting eight at four. And then a mix of the two. Ooh, we hit nine at 23. All right, in the final run, we want a bunch. Uh, I can probably do that, nah, looks pretty good. So, random, we hit 7 with 1. That's actually not too bad. Oh, 15? Okay, makes 7 seem a bit worse now. Uh, with 27. And number 4. Hitting 16 with 16. And the final one. Hitting 17 with 38. And moving on to the score. 
First, we'll take a look at the minimal enemies round. Our first skill, which just picks a random square, came in hitting zero enemies. In just four milliseconds, this created a zero enemy bottom line for the rest of the spells to gain points off of, but it does make a whopping 19 points based off of the speed itself. Next up, we had a catastrophic failure with our search every pixel, freezing the game for 2.4 seconds before it found the perfect amount of enemies, which is four, which would have gained 20 points, but instead was disqualified for the amount of time it took. Our third spell, the quick version of the previous spell that just failed on the time standard, came in at 0.13 seconds, earning 17 points, plus an additional 20 points for hitting the perfect score of four enemies. And the number four spell came in missing the max amount of enemies by one, earning just 15 points, and picking up a few extra points, which is 19 points based off its three millisecond time, which in the end was not worth it. And our final spell, which is supposedly the upgraded version of the previous spell, came in hitting the same amount of three enemies, but at a slower time of 16 milliseconds. So it earned 15 points for the enemies and 16 points for the time. So our scores for the first round were 19, disqualified, 37, the winner, 34, and 31. Round two, we're looking at medium congestion. Our first skill hits just a single enemy, creating a bottom line of one for the enemies here, which means it gains nothing for the enemies, but does pick up 19 points from the one millisecond speed. And of course we skip spell two, and our third spell gains 30 points from the seven enemies hit, and an additional 16 points from the 19 millisecond time. Spell four manages to add an additional enemy for eight enemies total, and also quickens the time to four milliseconds, gaining 35 plus 19 points respectively. And the final spell finds an area with one more enemy, hitting a total of nine, collecting 40 points plus 15 points from the 23 millisecond timing. This ends round two with scores of 19, DQ, 46, 54, and our winner for the round, 55, goes to our fifth spell. And the final round, we're now dealing with maximum enemy swarms. Our random skill even manages to hit seven enemies, setting quite a high minimum bar for the others, and of course earning no points since it will be the lowest again, but 19 points from the one millisecond timing. Skill two, still dead to us. Skill three, hits 15 enemies, which is eight more, so 40 points, and took 27 milliseconds to complete, earning 15 more points. Spell four again manages to add an additional enemy for 16, and quickens the time to also 16, for 45 plus 17 points respectively. And the final spell finds the most enemies again with 17 enemies hit, gaining 50 points and taking 38 milliseconds to complete, earning 13 additional points, which gives our round three scores of 19, DQ, 55, 62, and our winner, 63 points, giving our fifth spell back-to-back -back wins but looking at our total scores, our fourth spell is the overall best points winner, and we're going to crown that as the victor today. And that's going to do it for today's video. If you're interested in the code, let me know in the comments below. I'll find a way to get you the code, that way you can use these algorithms in your own games. And also, any questions, comments, or concerns, put them below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Otherwise, peace.